Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Jamal Kendir from Petal and today I'm going to be covering the second part of the circulation system. In the first part, I talked about the inlet equipment as well as the bottom hole equipment, and uh, in today's video, I'm going to be covering the outlet equipment. Assuming you watched the first video, just to refresh your memory, uh, we talked about how the mud tank uh, houses the mud, and you add some barite, mentonite, uh, polymers, all that into the um, mud tank through the mixing hopper and then the mud that has been conditioned after a while uh, it goes through uh, the mud pump the mud pump pumps the mud uh, through the sand pipe the kelly hose the swivel the kelly and then to the uh, bottom hole at the bottom hole assembly you have the mud encountering the mud mortar that helps rotate the bit and then uh, th it goes through the bit through the nozzles and then uh, it goes up as it goes up uh, through the annulus it takes with it cuttings uh, towards the surface the next series of equipment will be dedicated to getting the mud back to its former glory so when it was clear when it was pure uh, without cuttings without gas without sand the first filter or piece of equipment is the shale shaker which is the primary solid control mechanism removing about three quarters of the solids entrained in the mud uh, it's usually two or three shale shakers because you want to increase the area of filtration thus increasing the efficiency of the filtration because you'll have more leeway to change the uh, mesh screen size so as the mud flows through that mesh the big cuttings get sent to the um, back of the shaker because it, they can not go down because of the mesh and anything smaller than six inches or uh, depending on the mesh size it goes down towards the next filter as one drills there is bound to be some a little bit of gas found in the formation that gets into the mud it gets entrained in the mud uh, that's the scientific term for it uh, so any solid control device after the shade shaker cannot have gas in the mud the second uh, piece of equipment thus is degasses why wouldn't you want to keep the gas the gas has lower density uh, naturally in overbalanced drilling uh, it has lower density than the, the uh, mud so having a lot of gas in the mud means that your uh, overall uh, hydrostatic pressure of the mud will decrease because the density the overall density or the average density of the um, mud will decrease there are other reasons like um, solids control calculations uh, i'm just putting that out there in case someone wants to look it up but we'll move on to start talking about what the degasser is and how it works the idea of the degasser is pretty simple you need to provide an environment at which the gas can expand easily and thus it can be detached from the mud because the mud is uh, incompressible usually the gas is compressible so uh, when you decrease the pressure it expands and that expansion makes it easier to uh, you know for smaller bu 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 <laughs> bubbles to you know group together go up as one or just as big pockets there are a lot of types of um, degassers the most successful one or the most efficient one is the vacuum degasser because it provides that environment uh, and the way it works is that the gas goes th uh, sorry the mud goes through the degasser as it goes up there are some baffles of flow these baffles of flow only stop liquid and, and not gas so liquid hits the baffles and you know flows down whereas the gas uh, when it hits that baffle it just goes around it because of how <laughs> gas works and also because of how gravity works um, if a liquid uh, goes at high velocity and hits the baffle if it goes up it'll just go down and then flow down whereas the gas will just continue going up to be discharged out whereas the now degassed mud goes down to the next uh, filter equipment called the desander. In the desander there are two to three medium-sized hydrocyclones. Uh, each hydrocyclone works to separate the solids um, six inches, about six inches in diameter uh, from the mud. So how it works is you create a centrifugal force uh, that creates a vortex and this vortex separates the heavier particles that go down and uh, from the mud. Uh, that is uh, lighter than those solids th that goes up you want to create that centrifugal force and to do that you can just pour the mud because it goes down so you have to inject it at 
a high enough velocity to create that spiral flow and that spiral flow will create that vortex in the middle that uh, helps the mud go up and for uh, the solids that kind of you know hit the outside of the um, hydrocyclone will just flow down so the resultant centrifugal force the large solids will hit the wall at the, the hydrocyclone wall and goes down to be underflow whereas the mud the lighter mud will go up the vortex uh, to be overflow and that overflow will go to the next filter whereas the solids go to be discarded the same process is repeated in the desilters where you have a higher number of uh, hydrocyclones that are smaller and um, they're smaller because you are separating smaller solids uh, about four inches in diameter from the mud so after removing all the uh, particles bigger than six inches and removing the gas and then removing particles that are six inches in diameter and then four inches in diameter um, those are the four equipment that I just mentioned we move to colloidal particles and those particles are uh, separated from the mud with the decanting centrifuge those decanting centrifuges are very powerful they're about they exert about 4000 g's the earth exert 1 g on us while we're standing and this centrifuge exerts 4000 times that uh, on the mud to separate the solids from the mud um, so if you have a dust particle and you you know just throw it down it'll go down you know slowly it might take I don't know 30 seconds 4000 g's of pressure the idea behind it or the reason behind that is that you want the solids to settle on the bowl uh, so the outside of this um, decanting centrifuge in seconds so you use that 4000 g's to kind of poof let them go out so the mud is pumped uh, through the inlet in the middle of the uh, centrifuge and that has holes in it that lets the mud out and then the centrifugal force uh, of the bowl uh, the bowl is the kind of cylindrical shape to cone shaped parts of the centrifuge and the conveyor is the you know vortexy <laughs> looking uh, part that um, prevents the solids from going to where the mud is going so it's taking the solids as it's moving in a spirally way like a christmas candy kind of the bowl and the conveyor are, are rotated uh, at a certain speed they are different because uh, you have to have the conveyor at a lower speed uh, rotating uh, at a lower speed than the um, the bowl because you, you need the solids to settle so you can you know take them away usually there is a low speed centrifuge and then a high speed centrifuge the low speed centrifuge the first one the main idea for it is to get the barite out of the uh, mud the barite has a high density a much higher density than the mud or the solids so it's easier to separate it you just need to have that okay i need only 4.5 um, grams per cc uh, solids to be extracted from the mud so uh, the slower or uh, you know low rotational speed um, decanting centrifuges will take away that barite so you can you know re-inject it after you get the solids out um, through them so you you will add it again through the mixing hopper that we talked about in the previous video if you want to check that out please go ahead um, and yeah so low uh, speed centrifuge to get the barite out and then a high speed centrifuge to take that to take out the colloidal sized um, mud particles or oh, sorry <laughs> sand particles uh, from the mud and there you have it uh, your glorious uh, mud that was mixed in the uh, mud tank at the first video uh, is now back hopefully I, I hope you didn't do anything wrong um, it's it's back to its former glory and yeah we have we have come full circle the after the decanting centrifuge the mud goes back to the mud tank to be checked that okay everything is good so you can you know you have that circulation of the mud that's why it's called the circulation system that's it. that's the reveal today so uh, the mud circulates you don't just inject it once and then throw it out and then inject it once and then throw it out it's a circulation system to sum up the circle of life of the mud uh, you start with the mixing hopper through the mud tank mud pump standpipe goosenick 
Kelly Hose, Gooseneck, Swivel, Kelly, and then throw the drill string, and then mud motor, and then the bits, uh, the drilling bit nozzles, and then through the annulus, and then the flow line, it goes to the shale shaker, the degasser, the desander, the desilter, and then you have the uh, low speed centrifuge, and then the high speed centrifuge, and then back to the mud tank. Um, these two videos covered all of that, so I'm pretty proud of that, about that. So uh, uh, yeah, I hope this video was uh, clear, useful, and uh, hopefully a little bit, just, you know, a pinch of entertaining. In the next video, I'm gonna be covering the hoisting system, so I hope you stay tuned for that. Like, subscribe, and all that nonsense, and hopefully you'll see me guys in the next one, talking about the hoisting system. Hiya, cool.